Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. Freed, following up on what the Chair was discussing, in your written statement you say that no matter how quickly forensic technology for detecting deep fakes develops, it will be useless without the cooperation of the, giant, uh, the technology giants like Google and Facebook. How do we bring those people to the table to begin this uh, collaboration? Yeah. So the bad news is um, they have been slow to respond. Uh, for decades, really. It's not just disinformation. This is the latest, from child sexual abuse to terrorism to conspiracy theories to illegal drugs, illegal weapons. The technology sector has been very slow to respond. That's the bad news. The good news is I think a combination of pressure from here on Capitol Hill, uh, from Brussels, from the UK, and from the public, and from advertisers, there is now an acknowledgment that we have a problem. Step number one. Step number two is what are we going to do about it? And I still think we are very slow here, and what you should understand is we are fighting against business interests, right? The, the, the business model of Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter is data, it's content. Taking down content is bad for business. And so we have to find mechanisms to, either through regulatory pressure, advertising pressure, public pressure, bring them to the table. I, I will say the good news is in the last six months, at least the language coming out of the technology sector is encouraging. I don't know that there's a lot of action yet. So I'll give you an example. Um, we all saw a few months ago an uh, altered video of Speaker Pelosi. Um, this was not a confusing video. We all knew it was fake, and yet Facebook gleefully let it on their platform. In fact, defended the decision to leave it on the platform, saying, we are not the arbiters of truth. Okay, so we have two problems now. We have a policy problem, and we have a technology problem. Um, I can help with the technology problem. I don't know what I can do about the policy problem when you say we are not the arbiters of truth. So I think we have to have a serious look at how to put more pressure on the technology sector, whether that's regulatory or legislative or advertising or public pressure, and they have to start getting serious as to how their platforms are being weaponized to great effect in disrupting elections and inciting violence and sowing civil unrest. I don't think they've quite come to grips with that reality. Well, when that moment comes, and inevitably it will, in your opinion, what will that collaboration look like? Uh, there's a government element, there's an academic element, there's a public-private partnership element. Yeah. Can you just sure. daydream for a moment here with me? So I think the good news is uh, the Facebooks and the Googles of the world have started to reach out to academics, myself included, Professor Liu included. We now receive, receive research funding to help them develop technology. That's good. Um, I think the role of the government is to coax them along with regulatory pressure. I think what we've noticed over the last 20 years is self-regulation is not working. I'd like it to work, but it doesn't work in this particular space. So I think the role of the government can be through oversight, it can be through regulatory, it can be through a cyber ethics panel that is convened to talk about the serious issues of how technology is being weaponized in society. Um, but very much, I think, the academic industry model has to work because most of the research that we are talking about is happening at the academic side of things, uh, and obviously the industry has different incentives that we, than we do in the academy. So I think there is room for everybody. I'll also mention this is not bounded by U.S. borders. This is very much an international problem, so we should be looking across the pond to our friends in the U.K. and the E.U. and New Zealand and Australia and Canada and, and bringing everybody on board because this is a problem for not just us but for the whole world. One last question. In your written testimony, you suggest there's a non-technological component to solving the problem related to deep flakes and disinformation. Specifically, you wrote that we need to educate the public on how to consume trusted information and how to be better, better digital citizens. Uh, what should this public education initiative yeah. look like? I'm always reluctant to say this because I know how taxed our schools are in this country. But at some point, this is an educational issue starting from grade school on the way up. And as an educator, I think this is our role. Um, we have to have digital citizenry classes. Uh, some of the European countries have done this. France is starting to do this. The UK is starting to do it. Uh, public service announcements explaining to people how information can be trusted, what disinformation is. Um, but we've got to start taking more seriously how we educate the next generation and the current generation. And whether that's through the schools, through PSAs, through, through, through industry-sponsored um, um, uh, PSAs, I, you know, I think all of those are going to be needed. And you would agree that our technology giant friends have a role in that education process? They too. absolutely have a role. They made this mess. They need to help fix it. Very <laughs> concise. Thank you, Doctor. I yield back, Madam Chair.